Fury is an international lawyer and former State Department official, and he joins us from our bureau there. Uh, David, first of all, from a legal point of view, what stood out for you? Well, a couple of things. First of all, as your correspondent mentioned, there are substantial facts that we didn't know about that show just the details to which Russia went to try to interfere in our 2016 campaign, laying out all of the strategy, the people who were involved. A number of those Russians have already been indicted. Over 30 Russians have been indicted for their involvement. Many of them have not yet been, um, uh, they, they haven't been brought to justice, probably never will be brought to justice. But what we we see is a concerted effort by Russia. So the Mueller uh, special counsel office deserves a lot of credit for putting that together. That's, uh, you know, bi that should be bipartisan. That doesn't say anything about the responsibility of President Trump or the Trump campaign. But another thing that really stands out now is it, the report also details many instances that people could conclude were attempts by the president to engage in obstruction of justice. In particular, Mueller lists 10 different instances. He declines to decide and make a recommendation as to whether President Trump should be prosecuted for obstruction of justice, but he also makes clear that Congress has a role in deciding that, and Congress has a right to apply the obstruction of justice laws to the president, and also Congress has a remedy through impeachment. And so a big question coming out of today is what is Congress gonna do? The House is controlled by the Democrats. Are they gonna move forward with impeachment or not? Yeah, that is the question. I guess it's more of a political question. Will they pick up that baton? What do you reckon? I, I don't know. I think it's too early to tell. You know, people are still just digesting this report. It's a, you know, for over 400 page report with so many different details, trying to really understand uh, what Mueller was really uh, recommending here and what he had compiled and the, the, the overall gravity of the situation. You know, uh, Attorney General Barr provided a summary on March 24th, but it was a four page summary. It just didn't get into any of these details. We've now learned from this Mueller report, there's just so much more there. I don't think Congress is ready to make a decision yet. I think uh, the House Democrats are gonna have to look at this closely. You had a clip from Chairman Nadler. He's the chairman of the Judiciary Committee. The Judiciary Committee has jurisdiction over impeachment. He hasn't said yet whether he wants to go forward with impeachment or not. One thing he has made clear is he wants the full report, so he wants a version of the report that is not redacted, and that will also be helpful for Congress to decide what they should do. David, something that stood out to me was Donald Jr., the president's son, uh, essentially uh, getting off the hook because he seemingly wasn't aware of what he was doing. Explain that to us. Well, that's a very interesting part of the Mueller report, and it's something that we didn't know about until we got the report because Attorney General Barr didn't address it. But this is with respect to the Trump Tower meeting that took place in June 2016, and Donald Trump Jr. met with some Russians uh, who were acting on behalf of the government of Russia, and he in, in indicated he was interested in getting information dirt on Hillary Clinton, President Trump's opponent, and that could be seen as getting something of value from a foreigner, which would be a campaign finance violation. But Mueller says that he can't show that Donald Trump Jr. and the others from the Trump campaign who attended that meeting knew that that was against the law. So that's one of the reasons why Mueller decides not to recommend prosecution for that. But he's basically saying that Donald Trump Jr. may not have even understood the campaign finance laws but those campaign finance laws are pretty simple on the issue of whether you can receive anything of value from someone who is a foreigner. And it's clear that you cannot. Well, it's certainly left Donald Jr. Uh, uh, quite happy on Twitter today. David Tafiro, we'll have to leave it there. But thank you very much for your legal perspective.